just tell me the name of the Lord. Um, we welcome you to this service. Today is for you to encounter God in this service. This is announcement time, and we will start with our service days. Some days is our inflation moment, which will start from nine to twelve o'clock here. Um, in, our, in the month, we have our services in various categories. First Sunday is our anointing service, second Sunday, like today, is our communion, third Sunday is our Holy Ghost, and the last is our celebration service. Wednesday is our Bible studies that we start from 6 to 8 o'clock p.m. It's a wonderful time to come and spend in the presence of the Lord to study and understand the scriptures. Fridays is our mega cool and our revival service the same time. It's um, 6 to 8 p.m. It's a wonderful time where we come pray and hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Last Friday in every month is our power and deliverance service. It's an online that we start from 12 to 5 a.m. It's a wonderful thing for you to be here. All members should pick up their membership form from their leaders and their monthly contribution. Hallelujah. We have our teens, our youth, women's, men's and the following. Your tithe, seed, pledge, partnership, offering, they are all part of your service to God. Hallelujah. Um, you can follow follow up and visitation is a must for all members after the soul has been won. Our responsibility is to make sure they are steady in the house of the Lord. They will maintain them by following up people that are not coming to church. When you are not seeing them, you can go to their various houses and ask them why they are not here. If they have serious issue, you can bring that issue to the church and if need be to pray for you, pray for that person. Hallelujah. All members must visit our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. You can like, subscribe, and you can share to groups and timelines, and God will richly bless you. You can register your testimonies at the back, your testimony at the back to um, the King John. Hallelujah. Victory Crusade 2023. With God's servant, the chief apostle, Dr. Apostle Moses K. Fire for fire. Hallelujah. And also with our father, Apostle Emikai Gage. This crusade will happen at the Carlton Field from the 28th of March next month to the time of first. Hallelujah. Um, the time is 5 p.m. daily. The team days of his power. Your prayer and your financial support is highly needed. Hallelujah. Teens and youth thanksgiving will be held from the 23rd to the 26th of this month, which is February. All things and youth must fully involve and make it great success. All things and youth must attend rehearsals and practice. Hallelujah. On time. Fire for prayer. The meeting is going on every Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 6 to uh, from 5 to 6 a.m. in the morning from your various uh, groups, WhatsApp and Telegram. We are using WhatsApp. We are using Telegram. You will receive a call. If you are not there, you can write your name and your number and give it to me and you will be added. Hallelujah. All Living Springs Ministry International member should wait after service for a very important meeting with our Father Apostle and the day. Workers, workers, workers. Alright, so the school starts. All children must come with their books and their pen, their pencil and their book. God bless you. You will hear the rest from our Father who joins together with the Lord. Life in Jesus' name. 
today by God's grace we have an opportunity to meet with God's anointed servant and he will be ministering to us and then he will live and minister to another church praise the Lord his name is brother Timothy from the United States of America and he will minister to you this morning is that a blessing and all of that is that a good God this morning, but when I found out, my heart lit up even more. So I thank you, my brother, for you truly are my brother. I know that by the Spirit. And I bless you in this house and everyone in it. And I see good things coming to this place. Amen. The Word of God says, do not despise small beginning yes. for he is the father of lights and everything that is good comes from him so I bless you with those words and I thank you for the opportunity my brother to bless your people in Jesus name Amen. before you guys sit I'm going to open up in a prayer you don't have to sit yet so father we thank you for today Amen. For it is a day that you have made. And Lord, we look in scripture and it says that your son always gave you thanks before he asked you to move on his behalf. So we come together today as brothers and sisters, as husband and wives, and sons and daughters, as friends, but more importantly, Father, as your children. And we give you great thanksgiving for all the things that you have bestowed upon us thus far and the things that you have in store for us. We are expecting the mighty move of you in this next great move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, Father, that the fresh fire will rest upon this place and all Amen. And it will go out into the highways and byways. And this place will be known as a house of fire, Amen. but also a house of prayer. Amen. Prayers that get answered. And I thank you, Father, that your presence manifests in this place. Amen. I thank you even where the location is, that people will be drawn here, Father. Amen. And supernatural miracles of healings and deliverance and provision, Father. Amen. For we do know that times that are coming are going to be difficult. But for those that are, are your children, we shall be those that they will look upon as the favor of the Lord. The hand of God is upon us. And I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to share your word that you've given me this morning for these people. Your people, Father, my brothers and sisters. I bless them. I thank you that every ear is open, every eye is open, and all our hearts are in receive mode, Father. And that none of us will leave the same way we came. Amen. We bless your name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you, King Jesus, Amen. for your presence is always welcome here. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right, you might be seated. So what I'm going to do, due to time constraints, it's a blessing for me that I get a chance to preach in two different churches. I can preach all day because there's nothing better than to speak about King G, wherever you're at. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a message. But wherever I go, I don't ever like to leave without laying hands or praying for the people, whatever it is. It's Jesus that does it all. But he does choose vessels, and each and every one of us in here is a vessel. Amen? So don't ever think any less of your stance. For you're all called to be leaders 
all of us are called to be leaders because we all have that ministry that was actually spoken about the other day. It's the ministry of reconciliation. So remember that, that you are equal to any man or woman that stands up here. No matter what title they have, whatever it is, we're all in the, created in the image of God, and that is the way we should look at each other. Amen? All right. I'm going to go out of the Gospel of John, chapter 15. And I'm going to read and go through probably uh, down to, I'd say, verse maybe 10 or 11, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and read, and then I'll expound as the Holy Spirit uh, flows through me. Most of the time when I prepare a message, he usually changes it when I'm up here. And uh, But there's a blessing out of that, because I'd rather be obedient to what he's telling me to tell the people. Okay, because then that is the word that's going to transform and change whoever I'm speaking to, whoever the Spirit wants to speak to. Okay, ministers of God to get up here and they do their messages, they prepare. Yes, it's a good thing. That's what we should do. But Holy Spirit supersedes any message that we think is the one that needs to be brought that morning or that time that we're standing in front of a crowd. And the beauty of that is that you are being led by Him. And then when you open your mouth, He shall fill it. That's what the Word of God says. Amen? So, the Gospel of uh, John, chapter 15, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Can we all say that God is a farmer? And He loves fruit. We're going to learn about. Verse 2 Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. How many of us know that the pruning process is not a comfortable process? Can we all give an amen to that? Amen. But it is necessary. It is a necessary thing even though it is uncomfortable at times. Because he's after the greater fruit according to what he says here. Verse 3. You are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you. The teachings I have discussed with you. It is our job to be in this word daily because it is a cleansing. The water is a the word is like a water washing those things of the world that are attached to us in our soul and in our flesh. Because if we are truly born again, then our spirit man is perfect. But we still got some things that gotta get cleaned up in our soul. Okay? That's called the sanctification and the consecrated life that we all are called to walk out in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Verse 4, dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Sounds to me that that is a good trade-off. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in being vitally united to the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. So you remember how we're talking about that God is a farmer and he loves fruit. Now there are three kinds of fruit. There's good fruit, there's bad fruit, and then there's no fruit. The bad and the no fruit are unacceptable. The good fruit is what he is after. And we know what that is, and that is the fruit of the Spirit that is spoken in another scripture, which I'm not going to go into, which we all should already know because that's what's being manifested in us as we surrender to the Holy Spirit each and every day in our lives. In verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me, and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, 
cut off from the vital union with me can do nothing. How many of us, including myself, have all gone out and tried to do something for the Lord and it doesn't happen? That's because we didn't listen to the Holy Spirit. The other day I was preaching to the pastors about those that are led by the Spirit are the sons and daughters of God. Amen? That is what we should all be pressing into. Alright? Paul talks about pressing into the high mark. I've heard people say, my son or my daughter or this and that, the other, all have a high calling. And they brag upon that. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with being proud about your son, your daughter, your, your dad, your mom, whoever is representing Christ. But what Paul was speaking about there was pressing into the high mark of being transformed into the image of God. It's not about a ministry. It's not about a title. It's not about an office. It's being transformed into the image of Christ while we are here in this world. Which is just a blink of an eye in the whole grand scheme of everything. Amen? So in verse... Uh, let's see. Verse 6. If a person does not dwell in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch. And withers, such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire, and they are burned. So those branches that are producing fruitless things in our lives, those are the branches that he says he will cut off. There are things that we all do that we think are pleasing to the Lord. And they very well might be a good idea. But is it what God has called us to do? I know many churches that I have preached through all over the world that get themselves in situations that God did not call them to get into. And the problem with that is it ends up being put back in the crowd to pay for what they think is pleasing to the Father. That is why it is important to stay in your lane and hear what God is saying for you to do. Not what others are doing. Because it's either the body of Christ or it's not. We're all called to do our own individual tasks, which are all part of a big task. It's very important that we know this. And we know the giftings that are placed inside of people. That's what the church, the body of Christ, needs to identify. Some people aren't called to sing. I'm called to sing in the shower in the morning. Or in my alone time with the Lord. And there are some songs that I'm actually okay at singing, but to be up, so a lot of respect. To the worshipers to get up here. That was beautiful. That was just absolutely beautiful. You know why it was beautiful? Because it was from your heart. You can tell a true worshiper, especially when they are playing an instrument, they become the instrument. They become part of whatever they're playing. And then it's not something that you're just doing as a performance. God doesn't like performance, even though it's His show. And we're all picked in His show. Praise God for that. And we all have our own unique place in that show. But we need to remember, we're not all called to be in every scene. There's only one King character, and His name is King Jesus. And that's all we need to remember. He's in every scene. That's I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen? So we need to remember who's beside us, even though, or actually in us, and around the in the things that we do, in our daily walk, our interactions with other people, in our alone time, 
And it might not be a low time in the secret place. It might be on a low time where we what we're doing. Every one of us is going to have a sit down with the king. And we're all going to have to give an account. Every one of us. Believers and non-believers. Some sit-downs are going to be longer than others, and some sit-downs are going to be shorter than others. But I trust and believe everyone is going to get the well done, good and faithful service. Amen? Because those are the words that we should all desire to hear come out of the king's mouth. One of the prayers of my wife and I, is that we want to live a life that is pleasing. That's what we should all strive for. It doesn't mean when we mess up that He loves us any less. He understands this thing called humanity that we are wrapped in. The important thing is, is for us to never forget the gift of repentance that He has given us. Because it is still active in this realm, but it is not active. It speaks about fire in here. I'm a fire guy, and I sense all of you are fire people. Amen? There's nothing like the fire of God. It's a good thing. Because it purges those things that are not of Him in us until there's nothing left except for Him in us. And that's what we all should ask to take place. I'm sensing a shift here. If you look in the Old Testament, the fire was judgment. You look when the Israelites murmured and complained against God. And he sent fiery serpents. And then the people realized that what was going on because of what was happening to them. And they pleaded out to Moses to cry out to the Lord to please, please have mercy on us. And he did. And then you go to Zechariah where it talks about there will be a third heart that will be tried in the fire. Because there is a remnant that is being called to stand in the fire and be purged and to be produced as sons and daughters of God. To walk like Jesus walked and to do the works that are greater than He said we would do. Amen? So then you have John the Baptist that comes on the scene. And he says, there is one that is that I'm not worthy of tying his shoes or latching his sandal that will come and baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. In the book of Acts, when the Holy Ghost came down on Pentecost, there was a two-fold baptism that took place that day. And there was something amazing that the Lord showed me after that act took place. You see, part of, and it actually says that doubting the Lord is sin. It's, it is scripture. And that's one of the things that the Israelites did. They doubted the living God. And after everything that they about you if I saw the Red Sea parted yeah. I think I'd be scratching my head saying there might be somebody else other than me that's causing that to take place not because Moses raised his staff out of obedience so when Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit hit the people then there were cloven tongues as well that rested on the people, which represented the baptism of fire. And the amazing thing that the Lord showed me is when that took place, 
you cannot find anywhere in the rest of the book of Acts where the people of God doubted anymore. They might not know how it all worked, but they never doubted and they never dealt with unbelief again in the book of Acts. So that fire burned out all of those things in their mindset. And that is what the fire, the baptism of fire is coming and it's, it is in pocket. But it is coming in a mass move with the Holy Spirit. And it is going to burn out those things that we still deal with. And it's not going to be pleasant. I have had some encounters with the fire that I do not want to get into because it would take a long time for me to teach on and share you with. But I will tell you this, it's an amazing experience. And the more that I speak on the fire, the stronger the fire gets. So that is something that we should all embrace when it is freely given out to those whom will receive it. Allow it to work in your lives because it will perfect you. Let it do its job because once that is done, then the glory of the Lord can rest upon you. Not for you to claim, but allow to walk in. Because really on the mountain of transfiguration, when Peter, James, and John got a chance to really see, it was like a little peek behind the curtain. It was the glory of God that was doing everything behind the scenes. Amen? Amen. So that is what we should all desire in our hearts. To allow the perfection of us in Him so that we can walk in that authority and in that power. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In verse 9, or excuse me, we're going to go uh, verse 8. When you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. What did Jesus say? Are we to judge others? Now wait. We're to look for the fruit that manifests in their lives. That is how we will know who we're in front of. My wife and I, when we teach on deliverance and some other things in that spirit realm, when you come across a person that is confrontational to you, do not, do not get mad at the person because it's not really them. Either there's something in them or around them that's causing them to manifest. Paul talks about we should see through our spiritual eyes to truly know who is standing in front of us. We're all guilty of prejudgmental things on our brothers and sisters. And that is something that we all need work on. I don't care who you are. And we can't allow ourselves to be offended. We have to choose, like Jesus did, to, and said, to turn the other cheek. You know, when I share in America, because it's quite differently, obviously, in Sierra Leone and America, two different places, two different nations, two different spiritual realms, natural things, but in America, they don't know 
we're spoiled. And a couple things that I, especially for the young men, I think it is, it should be that we should serve as young men at least two years in the military. Because most men that have come out of high school are still immature and trying to find their way. And they need discipline. But also what they should do, everybody should do this, is go to whatever the term you want to say, third world country, less fortunate country, whatever it is. Go see how other people live. And then come back and say how bad it is in America. Now I love my country, don't get me wrong. But there's a lot of mixed up thoughts and things that are going on in my country. And it saddens me. It really does. Because some of them think that they're being persecuted because they got their feelings hurt that they didn't get chosen for this thing or that thing or they got overlooked or whatever the situation is. And I want to smack them. I really do. The humanity wants to come out. Because I've been to countries and I know this is one of them that has had horrific things that have been done. And there are other countries that are still having things horrifically done. We just saw before I came there was a news blast. Not that it was anything new, but the ISIS just decreed and declared war on the Christians. Like that's something new, but it's rising up again. So I tell my brothers and sisters back home, don't think that you're going to escape true persecution. Because it's coming. That's what the word says. What are we doing to prepare for it, though? Because it doesn't mean that you guys aren't going to go back through it. I will say this, though. You know how to survive it, which is incredible to me. I tell people back home, the amazing hearts of the Sierra Leone people and the resilience that you guys have astonishes me. Because I'm sure there are some people that are neighbors that took a limb from a neighbor and now they have to live next door to each other. How do you do that other than the grace of God and the love and the mercy? It's amazing to me. I also preach in Puerto Rico. A couple years back, they got leveled by a hurricane. But they are resilient people as well, like the Sierra Leones. They know how to fight. They know how to survive. So there is much that we can learn from your nation and your people. And it's an incredible opportunity to stand here and minister unto you, my brothers and sisters. And I see in the Spirit much fruit that will come forth through each and every one of you in here. Amen. For you shall be a garden that the Lord shall harvest much. Amen. He will have that bounty. That cornucopia that we have in America, that basket that has all the fruits coming out of it on the Thanksgiving table. It's a very traditional picture that we have for the being thankful for the things that are in our lives. But it shouldn't be just one day, it should be every day that we're thankful and grateful. The mere miracle of us still breathing while we sleep is a miracle. I think God knows what he's doing. At least I believe that in my heart. Amen? Amen? So what I'd like to do is close there so that I can minister to the people. Was that a word that ministered to your hearts this morning? Yes, sir. Honestly, tell me. Yes, I need feedback. Yes, I like the feedback. Because it helps sharpen me for the next time that I preach on the message. We should always ask to have a teachable heart. That's the only way we're going to continue to change. 
If you're a know-it-all, nobody wants to hang out with you sooner or later. Because then you become dogmatic. And you quench the great Holy Spirit. So I encourage you all. Spend the time with the Lord. Ask Holy Spirit. My wife is really good at this. She asked the testing to come. She has taught me this. And the things that we think we have overcome in life. Holy Spirit, come and test me there. I want to know if I've truly got to the next level and got truly set free from that thing that I was in bondage over. These are practices that you should and I should continue to put into our lives. Because that truly shows that there is fruit in that area. Amen? Amen. So I bless you. And uh, what I'm going to do is... Take the time. Spirit, how do you want to do this? All right, this is what we're going to do. We're all going to hold hands. Everybody's touching in here. Um, I would like, can you, can you uh, play a little soft music, like instrumental? Um, I want everybody to touch. Do you have like a recording, like music to play on it? Yes. Doesn't need to be loud. Just something there's something about corporate anointing thank you Lord I'm going to read this scripture and then we're going to everyone's going to stand and we're going to hold hands I think most of us I hope most of us if not all of us know this scripture It's so important. And it's an actual word that the Lord gave me. Because it is a key. It's Psalms 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Verse 2. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest that came down the collar and the skirts of his garments, consecrating the whole body. In verse 3, it is like the dew of lofty Mount Hermon and the dew that comes on the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Upon the high and the lowly. Unity triggers the blessing to rest upon the people. That is the key to this next move. We have to strive with all of our being to be in unity with our brothers and sisters. It is a must if we truly want to see what God truly wants to do. Because it's not going to be about a one-man show. It's not going to be about this man of God or that man of God and this revival, that revival. It's going to be His revival. And it's going to sweep the nations. Because His true gospel shall be preached on every corner of this earth before his coming. That is what his word says. Amen? Amen. I got a loud enough voice, so everybody touching? Even the little ones. Remember, there is no junior Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Spirit. So don't be in awe when the little ones start to do amazing things. I was just in Columbia, and I'll share this real quick. The Holy Spirit told us to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it hit some of the adults, but it hit the little ones. And they were 
praying in tongues and going around and laying hands on the people. So it is coming. It is coming. Be prepared. Father, I thank you that I have delivered your word today that you asked me to deliver. And Father, from my heart, whatever was not of the Spirit, I ask that it fall to the ground and that it does not be rooted in anybody here, including myself. Only by the Spirit. We thank you for your presence. And Lord, we're going to take 30 seconds. Each of us in this room, I'm going to say, take 30 seconds, not yet. But what I want you to do is to prepare your hearts. Lay down those things that need to be laid down so that you can receive. If it's repentance, if it's forgiving somebody, your neighbor, whatever it is. And then what I want you to do is to purpose in your hearts the need that needs to be met by the Lord. For in Scripture, everyone that came to Jesus with a need, he met that need. did not matter what it was, but it always got met. Whether it's a healing, a deliverance, if you're standing in proxy for a person, if you need food on the table, clothes, but I don't care what it is. So right now, I want you to quiet yourself. Purpose in your heart those things that you need to lay down. And then purpose those things that you need the Lord to touch. Thank you. Baptized in you, baptized in you, with the 
evidence of speaking in tongues. We have evidence of speaking in tongues. And prophesying. We ask you now. We ask you now. Baptize us. Baptize us. Jesus, baptize us. Jesus, baptize us. In the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. And fire. And fire. That's what John said that you would do. That's what John said that you would do. If we would ask for it. If we would ask for it. If we ask in our hearts, Lord. That's what I ask And whoever in this room. That's what I ask Has not received. The great Holy Ghost baptism and fire. Make it happen now. Make it happen now. Release it, Lord. Release it, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fresh fire. Baptize us now. Amen. Baptize of Jesus. Baptize of Jesus. Baptize us with your fire. We bless your fresh fire upon this place. Upon this place. From the back to the front, your fresh fire, Jesus. Jesus, we need your fresh fire. Baptize us with your fresh fire, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this place. I decree and I declare. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5 that the walls of fire will be erected and that you Father God will be in the midst of this place I thank you that this place will be known it shall be known in this neighborhood and throughout the town of Freetown I thank you that the, a revival will burst through and break forth in this area Lord I thank you that the people know that this is a place that they come and can meet their creator. I bless my brother, my brother Emmett, and his family, and everyone in this place. I thank you that laborers are coming to do the work, to help. I thank you, Father, that this church that you have put my brother in charge of, that he shall continue to steward it well. I thank you for the influx of people. Lord, I thank you that they will be ready. They will be ready when the people come. I thank you for it, Father. And I seal these prayers and everything that you have done here today in the precious name of Jesus and the precious blood of the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for everything. Thank you, Jesus. In
Alléluia. Alléluia. A vous me blesse. A vous me blesse. Amen. This is what God can do. God can pick you from anywhere and make you something. Amen. You have a testimony. I want you to please register it or give it to another. John, where is Thomas coming from? Field? Okay. Can... John. Amen. Um, continue to hold on to God's word. Continue to pray. And you see what God will do for you mightily. Is there any testimony, Dickin? Ah, ah. Look at the wicked people like this. Or that they will go do something for last year. But today I decided to come here based on one or two reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, I usually sing a lot, but I was asking God for one specific gift because normally I sing and only manifest there. And our pastor told us one thing that if you if you minister and the Lord takes His glory and you alone. You are not too close with God. You have a big problem with God. Because he only is only there when you are ministering. But not when you are in your private time with him. So I went on five days prayer and fasting, asking Lord, the Lord for him to manifest in me. Not whenever I see him. I just want him to be around me with me. The first thing he did was when I was in a service. He unlocked the gift of spiritual chanting. And I just came, I'm just here to appreciate the Lord. Because I don't think without him being in me, I can chant so well. I just, I, I'm, I don't know really what to say. I just want to appreciate the Lord. That's wonderful. Amen. Yes, I'm sorry, I saw your hand was raised. Amen. Amen. I want to give you opportunity. One more person, come there, boy. Church. Oh, what I've done. 
give me that paper and say, you left me at the church, they were the open me. But Thursday, the 26, I go get a big problem. I go take a never go. But I tell God, thank you for my life. God make it possible for me. I know you do. The girl who I come, the only Thursday, I go take the three weeks. I am a God. Suffer a lot, but I thank God. Meet you, meet you. God agree to that. And the only get the understanding to that. Thank you, Jesus, for what you don't do for me. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. You see, I say I put this there. But you want to let me stay in the computer. Say that does better. No, come with me. No, say this is what I pass. I ask you again. It's a bit good thing. Don't be saying that God no more change the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of. See the fish. Don't be missing all that services with the car. I can't say where. <laughs> eh? Wait till you. Second service. You will not go without being preached to you. Somebody say yes. If you want the anointing, say yes. Hallelujah. Now, next week, God willing, I will preach about the mantle for pastors of all this world. Fair. The mantle fair. They are mantle for business. It's different from preaching. They are not today in different levels. The two, it is for it in different categories. Am I communicating? No use the anointing for healing for say you want to do you want you want to do business with her. It will not work. Pay attention and listen. It will not work. Am I communicating? <laughs> so they are different level. Anointing there for play keyboard. It's different from the anointing to preach. It's not the same. Am I communicating? So understanding, we'll talk about the mantle form. On Wednesday, we'll have a Bible study. Come for Bible study. Many of you are not coming for Bible study. That's why even we said, open to Zachariah, he asked now, so. eh? Micah, oh, how guys in our name, so. Nahum, then let's open to Zebediah. I saw one man, he did tell me, Pastor, he gets a, he gets a studio. He said, Pastor, I can go to church. He said, I can go to church. And my pastor said, so he said, he said, even the book of Barnabas say, my pastor said, yeah, book of Barnabas. So from that day, day a book of Barnabas will be the corner. Hallelujah. One of the things I keep telling you in this church, that you should always do, know God for yourself. Know God for yourself. When you know God for yourself, no man can fool you. Can I talk to somebody? That anywhere you go in our life, you are secure, you are safe. You will not be deceived. Am I communicating? But when you don't know God for yourself, hey, any kind we can carry you, any kind we can toss you to and fro. So I fully know that day that, that that God is doing something great in this ministry. One of the things I get for caution you with, come with all your heart. When I walk with people, I don't walk hypocritically with people. That's who I am. I walk with my with a sincere heart. If I now walk with you, I will not simply pack up and let you. But when I walk with somebody, I walk with a sincere heart. They have a good place. The people not fall in love with me it's because my because of my sincerity. Am I communicating? So that's why those of you in choir, well done. Let's clap for the choir for their role. They took part in the crusade. You can clap better for them. I appreciate all of you. I have one more subject in the future for you. In the future, I'm not fixing any dates. Where are the ushers? 
Put your hands together for the ushers there. The ushers there. Take, let's give ourselves, give our services. Not to now for sale. Ah, no, blow some man who is one of the That's why you don't know the say. Ah, ah, yeah. That means that means do what we have And yet, are you getting me? And then I just, I went to bed this 2 a.m. And I got up 4 a.m. Is it 4? 4 30 a.m. Only two hours, 30 minutes, took me away to that. Sleep more than I'll be at. Is that easy? Yeah, this for here. You used to. Okay, now practice up, practice so that you used to. Who does have a practice? For information, every Friday, all night. So take the week for this crusade. Yes, you can use from this Friday or night. You two will use to it. Praise the Lord. Somebody say yes. What are you going to do? Pray for the fire. What you are do with the fire? You are out there. Every Friday. So, all night this Friday. The only time that we know all night, I think, is on the 10th. The 10th of March. Uh, by the grace of God, Apostle K will be here. Apostle Moskel will be in church to minister to you people before the crusade. Promise me. And I will see with him. I will see him today. And and let me just ship this in. The crusade the end today na, 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 a bad field. We all for the day. A bad field. In crusade begin on Monday. I was there on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I told him that I have to take part in this one. And he missed me. He even told me that 
They wanted to bring it, but because of the crusade, yeah, that's why Gurum come. They even told me that Bishop asked him to come, but he cannot leave that one. Are you getting me? And where is he done? Tuesday, Valentine's Day. They didn't go back in for another crusade. Look at the calendar then at the office of all the crusade. 12 months, 12 crusade. That's not calling. Are you getting me? So if they go for around it, they come back, they get crusade different, different parts then. I have the, 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 the program in my office. So let you know that. For let it come big part, are you getting me? Is 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 divine favor and divine grace. For let go can a cult. Am I communicating? And he's so eager for calm. He's so passionate for calm. You you can't come to this community, this oil in as well, you know they come. He's so eager for calm. Are you getting me? And and he's coming with he told me that he will be coming with a bishop. You saw him. Oh my god. And then call out what's he say? Yeah. Don't forget to know when we call out. He's from Nigeria. I don't forget to know. Where the prisoner? I will run in the wrong room. The wrong go inside the crowd. Lay hands, scatter. They come back. They come back. Continue. He will see power. Yeah. Are you getting me? My God. Then the lift, and the lift we are going to let down at the power. They lift the galley and front. In the dozen. It will happen in county here. Yeah. Yeah. And I was sitting there. The guy sit with me there. Ah. Then Bishop sit there. Then I was supposed to go to the ordinary seat. In one of you. Ah. Now I can I say, sit down. I say, ah. Then you. Ah. Hey. I was not happy about it. I was happy. Three days I saw you with me. I bought my suit here. Yeah. Okay. I want to look at you. I see. Am I communicating? So all of you must follow me. Me now, you pass me. Follow me outside. Go. What are they be going with me? What are they be going with me? Is it, is it on Tuesday? What are they be going with me? Where is me? Maybe you be going with me. Um, um, say that. You know they're not church. You don't travel. Come on, can you come and meet up? Say that. Go with me. Um, feel it. Go with me. Who else again? Where is uh, um, that? Uh, I said to go meet me there. Praise the Lord. So today, evening 10, 6, 6 30, meet me now at the field. Are you getting me? We have to pay that price. Talk to me now. Tuesday will be Valentine's Day. Come and show Jesus love. So, uh, is this Tuesday? Eh? So next tomorrow, come come with your Valentine. Yes, it's not a service; it's a fellowship with the Lord. Not a lot of useless bobo. That are useless kitty. Are you getting me? As on that say, get Valentine pen. I be see him. What are you show? Are you? Are you getting me? Uh -huh. If you guys, Mother Teresa read, like, well, let me have maybe to get so yesterday. That's all now for the holiness. Long start. 
May that thing that you stood for before the Lord make gratitude unto you. Amen. Make gratitude unto you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Make gratitude unto you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody thank him. Somebody bless his name. We bless Somebody you, exalt name. his name. We exalt you, my Father. We thank you, Spirit of God. We thank you, King of Kings. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Let your name be praised, O God. We exalt you, Father. Yes, Lord. Oh. 
communion. We take communion because it is a commandment from the Lord that unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are not one with me. It's a covenant. It's an agreement. Are you getting me? And it's something that you can do even in your house, not only in church. You take communion to, to, to put yourself in remembrance that I'm one with him. I align myself with him. Are you getting me? The Bible says the night that was about to be betrayed, he took the bread and let me break it and gave to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body that was broken for you. How can sickness dwell in you when his body was beaten for you? Today is a challenge that from today, we listen to, to Papa Mel. He said, 57 years ago, no more malaria. For some of you, on and off, on and off, on and off. Let it come to an end today. Amen. As you partake of this sickness, this communion, let every type of sickness in your body die. Amen. It will come and lift it up and bless and give thanks and give it to his disciples. And he said unto them, Take this and drink. This is my blood. There is no forgiveness of sin. When Adam sinned, the Lord killed a lamb and used the skin of the lamb to cover Adam's nakedness because the skin was covered with blood. The Bible says there is no forgiveness of sin, no remission of sin without the shedding of the blood. Jesus' blood was, Jesus was wounded in seven parts of his body. And blood was dipping all over his body. And the angel of the Lord gathered the blood. Not one touched the ground. They gathered the blood. And they went to the mercy seat. We have the Father is sitting. And pour that blood for you and for me. That's why when God is looking at us, He's looking at us through the blood. He, can, he always remember the blood. There are things that you and I have done that qualify us for death. There are things due to our own carelessness that qualify us for death. But the blood is speaking for us. When Cain killed Adam, sorry, when Cain killed kill, 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 uh, 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 Abel, the blood of Abel spilled on the ground and the blood began to cry for revenge. That's why we need to pray for, for this nation. There are so much innocent blood being shed, and every day they are crying for revenge. Father, we bless this bread, we bless these cups. As a group, as a group. Let it bring healing, transformation, deliverance, liberation, breakthrough, freedom on every dimension and every aspect of their life. And we will come back with testimony. In Jesus' name. The ushers will start at the back.
power and the who was here for the last one? Some eh? very awesome. It will be corrosive, aggressive. That 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 nothing will be hidden. The enemy will be exposed. I say the enemy will be exposed in your life. Amen. Are you getting me? So rest, rest on Friday, rest, get time for rest. Are you getting me? Get time for rest so that your body will be active and energetic to serve the Lord. Are you getting me? Um, today is your first time. Let me see you. Today is your first time. Okay, it's not here. Okay. Um, 